Hi guys, uh, one of the most popular threads in SA Rugby Magazine is our Saffirs Abroad feature where we take a look at the guys who are playing overseas. Uh, Mark, I know you're very hot for uh, our friend Ackerman over in Gloucester doing great things there. Yeah, Ron Ackerman, three man of the match performances in his last six matches. Not too sure. I love his English accent as well now. <laughs> uh, so soft and, and cultured. Um, 16 tackles, 17 carries, two tries and a few assists. Uh, just incredible numbers. And in SA Rugby Magazine last month, he came out and said, I've never not wanted to play for the Springboks. That's right. I'm available to play for the Springboks. The first thing he was asked is, are you expecting Eddie Jones as call-up? And he wants to play international rugby. And I think it would be criminal if Ron Ackerman is picked during the Six Nations to play for England uh, as soon as he becomes eligible. I just hope to goodness that Jacques Nienhaber, Rassia made a call to him and saying, but you're on the radar. Just stick with us for a bit because... We talk about taking Dwayne through to the next World yeah. Cup. If we're going to do that, we've got the two Dupree brothers who are playing brilliant rugby up north. We've got Liebenberg, uh, we've got Visser, and we've got Ackerman, and then we've got Notchie here, and we've got one or two others, and Evan Rus oh, and Ari Glow, and Pepsi All over the place. There are some amazing loose forwards. South African, in South Africa and abroad. Yeah. But I don't want to lose a guy like Ackerman. And I just, just to add to that is that I think what we were shown, uh, you know, last year, especially um, that sort of scramble before the British and Irish Lions test is we had about, you know, five world-class locks that would start in any other test team, uh, which we then just very quickly took for granted in terms of like, if you now look at the quality of lock in our domestic competitions, it's not there at all, because for the last couple of years, we've been able to rely on these sort of five guys. And all of a sudden, like three of them went down injured. And all of a sudden, your depth isn't really depth anymore. You've got two guys and a very much a second string guy on the bench. And that can happen in any position. So, you know, the counter argument to what you're saying is, oh, well, you know, we've got all these guys. Like we've got Brutlez, we've got uh, Ivan Ruiz, Ulrich Lowe. Uh, let's reward youngsters who are staying here in South Africa and not pick Ackerman. Because I know that that's the big sort of counterpoint to that. My thing is like, no, because very quickly three of those guys get injured. And there's another three loose forwards that you need. And the more guys we can have and keep involved in the system, whether they're playing in the North or whether they're playing, you know, domestically, make sure to blood as many of them, get, get them uh, buck caps, you know, commit them to the, to the national side. I, I think the interesting point that you make from that still is that it's too much the thinking that, that goes around our players overseas is, For sure. let's reward guys playing in South Africa. Why? Let's reward the best. Yeah. So if you're 21 and you happen to be playing in Paris and you're South African and you're the best, and you're eligible to play for your country. Sure. We fools not to pick you and win World Cups and win big tournaments. Uh, equally, if a player is playing for the Stormers and he's not overseas, I look at him w without any prejudice and say, if he was playing in Europe, he may be the best player there as well. Yes. So our aim has to be to, to consolidate our strength of our domestic game, but also accept that the very good players are going to go for 3 million euros as opposed to stay for 3 million rand in South mm. Africa because clubs will pay that for them. Mm. And if you look at that Saffirs Abroad rap, which I love, I think it's the, it's the one thing I look forward to reading on a Monday. Your team does a great job on it. You get, look in the USA, you look in Japan, uh, you look in Europe, and especially if you look in the, in, the, in the Premiership and the French top 14. It's just South African names and they are the stars mm. week in, week out. We look at Leicester. Who are leading the champions of the premier champ, uh, premier premiership at the moment? The Andre Pollard will go there. They've got that great loose tree of uh, Van Staden, Liebenberg, and Jasper Visser, uh, and they all kind of committed to the game. There, Kubis Reinach is uh, every week you see he's mm. doing something special for Montpellier. Uh, Dylan Leite is still doing good stuff. Rule is still doing good stuff. There's a South African popping up all the time, and I'm not even mentioning our locks and our props. No, sure, because we just produce them and send them over there, and and those who are playing for other countries as well. So. The depth of the South African game can't be confined yeah. to South Africa. We've got some bloody talented players. Our rugby is strong. And, you know, I, I read a piece the other day, Jake, which kind of I disagree with him, saying uh, don't pick uh, South African players if they're overseas for the box. Why prejudice the box? I know he wants to try and make his local game stronger, but don't prejudice the box. We went down that route. We were seventh in the world. We were getting clapped by everyone. Um, I believe we, we can be strategic in how we select players. There may be tests that you only pick a, a Southern Hemisphere-based 15 uh, because you want to give these guys, you want to manage their time. Yes. And, and the big thing for Rossi and Jacques this year will be they were in survival mode last year to win the British yeah. and Irish Lions series. 
this year has got to be about managing game time with the veterans I, and bloody youngsters. I agree with you mm. completely there. It doesn't have to be such a binary thing of one or the other uh, because it's not going to be to anyone's benefit just picking the Northern Hemisphere-based players year-round. Then they're playing that Northern Hemisphere schedule, which is more intense locally than our domestic one here. Uh, like you're saying, there's a way to consolidate it where you're actually getting sort of even experience and even you're getting the most out of your, your two hemispheres. Yeah. Um, and but like you said, you know, last year that wasn't the case because it couldn't be the case. We had to sort of hang on and survive with those guys that, you know, did it for us at the World Cup. But there needs to be a move towards that rather than sort of time wasted on arguments about whether overseas players should be picked or not. No, sure. But I think we're playing the trumpet here for guys that we wish were in the box set up, guys we think add major value. Like you always say, Mark, who are you dropping? Who are you dro- dropping to bring in Ruan Akamai? You know, if you've got, if, if you've got half a brain cell, you pick a bloke for one test. And you, can win, <laughs> you can win him at least for three years yeah, from that yeah. last test. And uh, my thing there is when a guy is consistently playing so well, why give him to another country and have the potential of him coming back and damaging us when you know that player's heart is not mm. necessarily with that country as a sure. first choice? Sure. Uh, you know, Rory Cockett, we go back to the day, he made it very clear he always wanted to play for the Springboks. He was eventually drafted and he had a lower back problem and he couldn't. He ended up having a, a fairly successful career for France. Uh, Ruan Ackerman has been very insistent that he's gone over to Gloucester, he's improved as a player, he's done it without his dad being the head coach. He's grown in strength. He's embraced the English lifestyle. He said it'd be an honor to play for England if the opportunity arose, but his first love will always be South Africa. It's the same with the South Africans who went and played for Australia. You know, Tian Strauss said when he heard the anthem sung sure. um, at Newlands, he felt like singing it as well. So it's very rare that players go there and aren't back in this country. Mm. So they do it for professional reasons. I just think we, we should move beyond this thing of saying he made his choice. He wants to be an Englishman, no, sure, so be it. Sure. He's, made his choice to, he's made his choice because he's very good and he's been paid a lot of money to play for Gloucester. I just love being able to see every Monday the superstars in English domestic rugby, in French top 14 and especially in the Japanese league, are more South African than any other. And that's a credit to the quality of player we produce in this country. And as a national setup, we don't have to choose. We can have either or. Yeah. And I think the point that Jake raises in that uh, column of his is that um, we're getting to the stage now where the liability of signing a big name South African who could appear for the box at any stage is eventually going to take its toll on these Euro clubs. Eventually, they're going to have to weigh up the reins and sense of bringing in a guy like Irvin who potentially doesn't play a lot of rugby for you because he's saving himself for test rugby. Or a guy like Andre, who uh, yeah. unfortunately through injury... Uh, didn't play a lot for Montpellier and they've offloaded him and, and look I think he will prosper in uh, at Leicester and I think his game is also suited to yeah. to that kind of intensity uh, and, and the box will be the beneficiary of it but I, I've always been amazed at clubs spending huge amounts of money knowing Spot on. that the play is still available for his country because mm-hmm. when there was still the restriction I could understand that and with a lot of the Islander players um, they get paid so much by their clubs they, they, they choose to play for the club ahead of playing for Fiji or Tonga or Samoa. Mm-hmm. And so the clubs invest in them for these, uh, that month during the Six Nations where yes. the competition still continue whether the internationals are there or not. Yeah. But just from a South African perspective, geez, so much to be excited about uh, domestically and also abroad. Uh, we've got so many good players and I would, I would venture to say that currently, I don't think there's a, if you pick 50 players. Of overseas it, best players. 50 players. From each country, I would I would venture to say that for the first time, South Africa is probably tops when it comes to talent available. Where we're always secondary to England and to New Zealand, I definitely think that we're we're yeah. the side that can produce the most talent in every position. Yeah, I think that's a spot-on call, and it's exciting time for South African rugby world champions. We've got a ton of talent all over the world. It's great stuff. And let's not forget we got Varsity Cup as well. <laughs> Coming <laughs> soon. Thanks for tuning in.